2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, trucebreakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. The Bible said in the last days that times will come when men will be high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We got it. The football stadiums are packed this afternoon in the church of God. That's empty. Fulfill the scriptures. That's happening. Yes, sir, we're in the wilderness. Now, I'll tell you one thing, brother. When a man is born to be a child of God, old creeds and denominations will never satisfy him. Yeah. No, sir. The things of the world, basketball games and parties and, and bunco games and all these kind of entertainments that the modern churches do today in our day, no wonder they grieve. Where is God? They grieve God away from them. That's exactly the right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Chickens like that kind of stuff, but eagles don't. Yeah. That's not eagle food. All ball games and, and frolics and so forth, that's all right, but it don't belong in the church. In the church, we want Christ. Not a form of Christ or a picture of Christ or a dead Christ or a tomb of Christ. We want a risen Christ who's alive with us, proven himself that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what the church wants. What they ought to want. Depends on what the appetite is. See? The churches has got ball teams and soup suppers and cricket parties and <laughs> lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, truce makers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are good. These despise no. These despise no choking them out. Despisers of those that are good. Yeah. Hey, they want an educational system. Why? So they can do anything they want to and still hold their Christian profession. Oh, if you got a great big something where you can go in, go down the lines and things and chew chewing gum and, and uh, kick one another on the side and go out and have a recreation halls and things where you all go out and play basketball and things like that. I ain't got nothing against basketball, baseball, football, or whatever it is, a big... If that's all your God is, it's a big bag of air. Well, let me tell you, what we need today is a Word of God anointed for this age that will bring forth the power of the Holy Ghost again. Yes, that's all right, but that don't belong in the church. No, sir. You have to build something like that to keep the church together. You better burn it down or kick it out or get something in there that will bring the Word back in you. That's the things of the world. Oh, mix it with the Word of God. You cannot do it. No, sir. And then the church steps dead. Ball games, attractions of the city, and the worldly things has the church all lured away. The Bible said to be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, hotel. Hybrid the church. Like they did the chicken, like they did the mule, like they did everything else. High breeding it. Making it different. Breeding in the world, the things of the world. Basketball games and soup suppers and, and bunco games and all kinds of things of the world. They had plenty of money. They had great buildings. They had great things going on. But they didn't have no warmth of the Holy Spirit. Oh, they had a, uh, a regime. Oh, my. They got a united church together. Boy, they got the biggest buildings they ever had and the things going on. But no Holy Spirit, see. That's what God sent for the church, the Holy Spirit. Now, as we continue on in this 16th verse. They have all kinds of committees. Oh, we got a great regime of that. The old ladies' aid society and the, the young man's pinochle game and, and the bunco game on Friday night and uh, the basketball game on 
Sunday afternoon and all oh, the baseball game on so and so and oh we just got the, the man's um, chattering society and oh we got all kinds of things I tell you she's loaded down societies and clubs and beatings and whatever more but no warmth of the Holy Spirit Amen. see you've got a big regime but you haven't got nothing that to warm up Amen. you're warming up to the world but not to God that's why you're lukewarm Amen. Hallelujah. it's the world they're trying, the church is trying to give the world a big bunch of, of entertainment. Or on their grounds. We're not supposed to. What do we do? We just give them a great big pot of cooked up religious mulligan stew. That's all. Call it social parties and little bunco games and soup suppers to pay off the preacher. Nonsense. That's no way to run a church. God sent the Holy Ghost to run the church. Run. But we're trying to give the world. Why, you can't meet them people on that. They've already got that. They're genius in entertainments. They are genius. So we can't do nothing for them. Let's give them something they haven't got. Hallelujah. The one thing they don't have is Jesus. Amen. Don't try to entertain with them. You'll meet them on their ground. Preach Christ. And let them come on this ground and find out what they got. If they want to stay in the garlic land, let them stay we ain't to meet him there. We're not mimics. We're apostles. Hallelujah. We don't, we're not apes as they say we are. We're sons of God. Created in his image. Nonsense to that bunch. Come away from it. There's a living Christ. Amen. Oh. The one thing they don't have is Jesus. Oh, we, we can give them all. Oh, they got plenty of psychology. Philosophical the religions and everything. Oh, oh my, they're, they're, they're loaded with that. But the one thing they don't have is Jesus. That's right. Oh, they have entertainment. They can make a bigger basketball fuss than you can. Sure they can. They can put man up on them movie screens out there that could outsnow anything you could do. That's right. They're a genius at it. Don't try to compare with them. Didn't Jesus say to the children of the world what they are? That's right. But there's one thing they don't have is Jesus. And that's what we're supposed to represent to tell them. Now that we have the big gymnasium and we have the biggest Sunday school class and, and we give this away and we have suppers and we have this for our church and dances. If you'll come join our church, we have a dance every Wednesday night. Every Thursday night. After the prayer meeting's over, we have a little dance in the basement. Here the other day when this... Did you see this picture from London? They come in on the screen. Well, that young idiot over there, a bunch of the a Presbyterian church, put on a, a beatneck play of the resurrection or the crucifixion. I've got it right here in the newspaper. And it just thrilled England all over. It was in our newspaper here. They had a boy dressed up with his candy stripe shirt on and jeans pulled down over his hips. And he was Jesus. They had another Jew, Judas... And he was playing a little guitar like this, walking up down, telecast national wide. I'm going to get him tonight, honey. I'm going to set him. And all like that. And a girl rocking and rolling saying, Bob Jesus saying, I love my mom, old chum. Ain't that good enough, hon? Like that. Walking around like that. When a religious church that stoops that low, she's gone. What the people, they thought it was wonderful. Well, you think that's something? right down in our own country every Thursday night in a certain big organization of church the pastor and all of them puts on a beatneck game picture in the front page with a long beard a beatneck a certain denomination of church my friend called me the other night to come down of a great holiness organization and they were putting on a beatneck or a rock and roll party and even the man was doing the telecast said aren't you a Afraid that you'll get some criticism. He says, long has a certain this church organization forgotten the beautiful art of rock and roll. 
When it comes to a place that the church has no good entertainment, it's a miserable, backslidden, hell-bound group of people. When it gets to a place that we cannot represent Jesus Christ in the power of His resurrection, hold up your doors and go back to the world because you're dead anyhow. Amen. Yeah, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. We can't out glitter them. He is a light. He is a glow, not a glitter. Jesus don't is not a glitter like the world glitters, but he's a soft glow of light. Amen. And you can't shine it. You have to let it shine. Don't you try to work it up because it won't work. That's what's the matter. If they can't get them one way, they get them another. If they can't work it up to try to make their light shine, what do they do? Well, they try, that's artificial makeup. You can't make it shine. Just let it shine. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. What time is it? I heard my watch alarm. Yeah, I'm past time. He's raised from the dead. He is alive. What is the message today? Come. Believe. Go tell others that he is risen from the dead. He's alive and he appears to the elected church tonight. As he appeared then, what he does then, I've always told you that God is infinite and cannot change. And if that was his attitude towards the world then after his resurrection, it's the same thing today. And Jesus witnessed the same thing by saying, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Let us bow our heads. Lord Jesus, sometimes I, I wonder if I'm not beside myself. When I think of seeing the horrible curse that's coming on this world, when I think of the churches that's trying to be entertainers, trying to copy after the world, Lord God, oh, and you, you said, Father, I pray that you take them out of the world. Take the world out of them. Keep them from the world. You prayed that they might keep your disciples from the world. And here they are going right back to the world, trying to compare with the world. I said, if I'd been there, I wouldn't have said very much about it. I just stood and looked. He said, You're not, you don't care for baseball very much. I said, certainly not. I said, I don't care for baseball. Therefore, I'm not interested in it. And I said, if I've been interested in it, I've been acting the same way you do. And if you was interested in my God, in the coming of the Lord Jesus, and the power of God, you would act the same way when the Holy Ghost strikes at you. What kind of a spirit is in you? What you're feeding on? Your life is feeding on something. And I said, don't be a vulture eating a dead carcasses of the old, a carrying of the earth. Feed on the heavenly things, the word of God. Jesus said, man shall... There's an absolute in a ball game. That's the empire. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we don't like his decision either. But it's, it's, it's that anyhow. The empire. His decision is the final word. That's right. No matter what others say, if he says it's a strike, it's a strike. That's right. Certainly. No matter what others say, that don't have nothing to do with it. And uh, let's just think of if you, I don't go to ball games, I'll just happen to jot that down. And that's the today. You can have all your church joining your products and basketball parties and everything else you want to. But for me, bury me in Christ. For A little while in the world will see me no more. That's the unbeliever. They're out to ball games and swimmings and so forth. They'll never see me. But ye shall see me. For I'll be with you, in you, to the end of the world. Everything in the church and ball games and everything else to make money to pay the pastor. Never was intended. Amen. Certainly not. But you borrow up some old rooster and sell it for about a dollar and a half a plate. You've turned the upper room into a supper room. That's right. You don't have to do that. Take God at His word. He owns all things. Certainly. 
about the sinner. You can't blame a sinner's a sinner. Don't try to reform him. Don't try to tell him this side or the other. He's a sinner to begin with. He's a pig to begin with. He don't know no difference. If he goes to the movies and he goes on Sunday and he goes to ball games and he uh, does all these things, he's a sinner to begin with. Amen. His nature's like a hog. No hog stick his old down manure pile and eat all the grains out of it and everything. Well, that's he's a hog. You can't blame him. He's a hog. Amen. That's where we're sinners. But when you go and call yourself a Christian and stick your nose in with him, then you're no better than he is. But you're aware. Come out from among it. Let go of the world. Let go. Let God. Let go. How do you? Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Heady, high-minded, incontinent, fierce, and despisers of those that are good. Yeah. Having a form of godliness. You say they're communists. No, they're not. They're church members. Yeah. Having a form of godliness. But what? Denying the power thereof. Yeah. Having a form of God, but say God doesn't do these things. See, there's no power to it. You just accept and do this, that. See, no change of life, no nothing. It's just, just belong to church. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. We do not try to compete with the world and their momentous psychological exercises. We do not try to outglitter them with ball games and intellectual entertainments. We cannot meet them, Father. You said the children of the night are wiser than the children of the day. So we know that, Father. But we have Jesus. They don't have it. You know, the other night I said that uh, Christ is a, a glow, not a glare. We will never be able to convert the world by trying to uh, shine up our churches and make them bigger and polish up our ministers with better education. They, they already got all that stuff. They got all kinds of psychology and ball games and everything. The world's got that. But we got something they haven't got. That's Christ. Just yeah. stay in your own territory. We got Christ. They don't have Christ. They got all the psychology. Oh, don't try to match them with which you can't do it. They, they don't. They can outmatch you. For the prophets of God, oh brother, for the preachers, if you would say it, across the nation, to fall on their face. When I go, there's 19 million Baptist churches, 19 million Baptist brothers in America, 13 million Methodists, 11 million Lutherans, 10 million Presbyterians. Mercy, think of that. And constantly to fall in. So, Why are you out here tonight? It's because you're interested. Why are you at the ball game? It's because you love God more than you love ball games. That's the reason you're here. God calls you and put a different desire in your heart. God calls the church by His grace. If it wasn't today for the grace of God, you'd be out here in the rain watching a ball game somewhere. You'd be out here on the highways running around, you'd be in a bar room somewhere, be out with some man's wife or some woman's husband. You'd be a, out in the world. But it's by the calling and grace of God that He changed your minds and made you new creatures in Christ Jesus. And our soul looks up to Him today with expectations of His coming. You know, faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about it. We don't do enough talking about the good things of God. That's right. Amen. Tonight the church of the living God is stuck up too much on talking about television programs right. and some kind of a ball game or something on that order. You should be testifying to the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and let your whole life be wrapped in that.
so good to where the parties and they eat soup suppers and entertainment and baseball games and bunk hole in the church and everything. You, you let Jesus go out. Oh, what a pity. Let me go into your home. Let me see what you read. Listen to what kind of music you listen to. I can tell you what you're made of. What's on the inside of you. That'll come out. I was preaching at the our tabernacle some time ago. And oh, the Holy Spirit got into the meeting and one woman began weeping with her hands up. And a couple of days after, I met a Sunday school teacher from the First Baptist Church. He said, Billy, I was standing outside. They don't like me too well because I preach divine healing. I preach the full gospel. What Christ died, a full gospel, a full redemption. And he said, I was enjoying your message to that woman beginning to cry. And he said, that just made shivers go up my back. I said, you mean that dear saint of the old mother sitting back there weeping? And it made shivers go over her back and she was rejoicing in the spirit. If you'd ever get to heaven, you'd freeze to death, boy. You're going to hear plenty of it when you get there. Because the Bible said so. Then he got all excited because the first Baptist church has a ball team. And I heard him over behind my house was screaming till you couldn't hear yourself think. And I said, what was all that noise over He said, you know Charlie Nolan. I said, yes. He said, he hit a home run and three men on base. I said, what you so excited about? If you said that woman was a holy roller, then you must be an unholy roller. That's right, see, it's just become so modernized, it's left God out of its program. But it's got to a place, friends, where you, it's getting horrible out here. Old time religion, they say it's something that's passed long ago. Can't have it. It's too much. We're living in a modern day. We've got to get modern ideas. we got to have shuffle boards in the church, ping pong games, and everything to hold our young people. Brother and sister, if it ever gets to a time that I have to have a card party in the church to hold an audience, I'll quit preaching the gospel because it's lost its power. I'll tell you, brother, what we need today is the old-fashioned, simple gospel, Holy Ghost power. Preach in its simplicity. Man, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw a man unto me. Amen. Yes, sir. Waters of separation must be kept in a clean place. Oh, wish we could deal on it a little while. A clean place. The waters of separation is the word. Paul said over in Ephesians over here, said, for he has washed us with the water of the word. See, the waters of the separation, the word, preaching the word, separates you. You hear the word and say, I'm, I'm wrong. I better quit this. I'm playing church. I better quit that. See, that's the waters of separation and should be kept in a clean place. Not a cigarette smoking preacher. No, sir. Not a preacher that's running around all the country running with southern women and things like that. Not a church that practices free love and all these ungodly things and goes to baseball games and has big entertainments and social dances in the church. It's to be kept, the Word of God to be kept in a clean place. Amen. A clean place. Yes. That when the wayward man comes by, he can come into a clean place and be sprinkled with the waters of separation. Amen. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. I come to the church tonight. It was altogether too snowy and bad to come here. But they had a basketball game. And they had to turn hundreds away. What is it? Their God is basketball. And what is your God then? A big blown up piece of air. I'm glad that our God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And His person of His resurrection. A real living creator who made the heavens and earth. But they want to see that. The kind of spirit in them draws for that. The spirit in a Christian draws him to Christ. Let a ball game come in town or the colonels and giants or whatever it was happen to meet out here somewhere. They close the churches. 
to get the attention. Let Elvis Presley come down here on the street with his guitar and go to swing it back and forth. Or some of them guys and on a Wednesday night, the prayer needs to be closed. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Heady, high-minded, incontinent, fierce, and despisers of those that are good. Yeah. Having a form of godliness. You say they're communists. No, they're not. They're church members. Yeah. Having a form of godliness. But what? Denying the power thereof. Yeah. Having a form of God but say God doesn't do these things. See, there's no power to it. You just accept and do this, that. See, no change of life, no nothing. It just, just belongs to church. Having a form of Godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Right our church today, they got the ladies society, the man society, and this society, and ball games, suit suppers, and everything else. The prayer meetings have left off, you know. No more. And the Holy Ghost promised He had only sealed those who sighed and cried for the abominations done in the city.